Hi, in this video I will create an AB switch for the Atari ST that will allow it to boot from an external B drive, like the HXC or GoTek drive emulator. I will do this in a way that does not require cutting pins of the chip or scratching PCB tracks. In order to gain access to the motherboard, we will first need to remove the metallic shield. It is held by a couple of screws and also these flaps, which can be easily straightened with pliers. We will also need to lift this lid that is covering the internal power supply and remove two additional screws. There is also a connector that needs to be removed. After that, the power supply can be lifted up and the shield can be freely removed. The back of the PCB is also protected by a metallic plate that needs to be removed as well. After that, we have full access to the motherboard. The chip that we are particularly interested in is the Yamaha YM2149F. On the Atari 1040 ST, it is located just under the internal drive. We are specifically pinpointing pins 19 and 20. They are responsible for identifying the drive letters. We could simply cut the pins of the chip and use a crossover switch to toggle between the drive letters. But that would be too easy and we do not want to damage our precious parts of our Atari ST. So we are going to do this right and desolder the chip. For that purpose, I am using this handy desolder station with a vacuum pump that is set to 380 degrees Celsius. Without it, I would not even attempt to desolder this chip, as using a desolder wick can easily damage the PCB traces. Some of the pins were stubborn and needed the solder to be reapplied before they surrendered. And eventually, the Yamaha chip could be just lifted out of the motherboard. Let's clean up the board with some IPA and then proceed to solder the 40 pin socket. I am using sticky tacks to hold it in place. And then it's just a matter of soldering all the pins of the socket. Now I am going to bend some pins of another socket that will be stacked on top of the one that we just soldered. This is to create an interruption in the signal flow, which basically replaces the cutting of the pins. I am also bending some of the other pins that I will explain why in a short while. The pins that are significant for the AB switch are pins 19 and 20. From another socket, I will remove some of the pins. They will be used to tap into signal flow on the motherboard. Using tweezers and pliers, I am unfolding the metal part of the pins. There is also a part that will need to be cut off. And hopefully we have just created a connection point that can fit inside a pinhole on the socket. We can use the flap to solder a wire onto it. And when we insert the socket with the bent pins on top of it, it should leave a little bit of gap that is just enough to separate the path. Let's do a quick measurement if that is really the case. And? Well, actually it's not. So, as a solution, 
I will place a small stroke of an electrical tape. Maybe there is a better way to do this. I am curious if someone has tried to do something similar. Please leave a comment below. Measuring shows no short now. Let's get started to solder some wires. I have measured two sets of 5 wires of around 50 cm. Maybe it's too long, but it's always better to have the wires longer than too short. Now the wires can be soldered onto the flaps that we have just created. It's best to pre-thin it before soldering a wire onto it. And we need to repeat this for the 5 remaining pins. The other wires can now be soldered to the socket which will go on top. I can now talk a bit about the other pins that I have bent. The Yamaha chip is also used as a sound chip and those are the pins that output channel 1, 2 and 3. In the next video I will use them to create a stereo mod. So this is just a preparation. Please subscribe to my channel if you would like to get notified when that video gets released. Now we are just focusing on pin 19 and 20, the green and blue wires. I am trying to use shrink tubing here, but they are just too thick to fit between the two sockets. Maybe using the sockets with the round pins would be better, but I did not have any at this time. Let's now place all the soldered wires into the socket. Patience is the keyword here. I have also added another pin for ground, as it will become handy in the future stereo mode. The pins can now be covered with the electrical tape and the chip with the socket that has wires soldered onto it can be placed on top. To secure it a little bit more, I have attached some more electrical tape to hold the two sockets together. Maybe it's better to do the whole assembly before soldering the first socket on the motherboard. Oh well. Some final checks with the multimeter show that there are no shorts between the pins. So we are all good. Our monstrosity is fully connected. I don't remember a time where I had so many wires sticking out of my computer. Let's continue to wire up the switch. I am using here a so called double pole double throw switch and I will wire it up in a crossover configuration. That means that when we throw the switch, pin 19 and 20 will be toggled and drive B will become drive A. To wire up the switch, we first need to connect two short wires across the pins on the edges that will create an X. Then we connect the wires that lead to pin 19 and 20 from the PCB to one end of the X. And the pins in the middle connect to the Yamaha chip pins 19 and 20. After we solder all the wires and add shrink tubing, the switch should end up looking like this. Let's test out the switch by connecting the HXC floppy drive emulator as an external drive P. At this point, the external drive is still not swapped. Flipping the switch and resetting the Atari should now boot the external drive. And it seems to be working. It's time to drill some holes. I have placed the PCB inside the shield and the case and made a mark where to drill. Luckily, I have an ST without the modulator, so there are some gaps in the shield. If you have an STFM version, you can drill holes just above the shield. Next to this one is another hole, and I am not sure what is its original purpose, but I will pre-drill a hole there as well 
for the future stereo mode. We can start drilling the holes. And finish up on the other side. <laughs> By the way, this is the bit that I am using. It is pretty handy, as you can drill holes with it of various sizes. After placing the motherboard back inside the shield. It looks acceptable. We can finish up by attaching the switch and tightening the nut on the back using pliers. Let's do a final test. and play some International Karate Plus, which used to be one of my favorite games on the Atari ST. That's it for this video. In the next one, I am going to finish up the stereo mod. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.